I have a video of Michael Irvin that was. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Damn! Ow! That hurt! <laughs> Damn! Fucking wind! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I got to tell you that every time I see that clip, it hurts. It literally hurts. It hurts my head every time I see it. But that's how it feels being a Dallas Cowboy fan. You know, we get all excited uh, about what the Cowboys might be doing, where Jerry Jones was saying we're going all in until we actually listen to Stephen Jones. And it sounds like with the Dallas Cowboys, A, we're not going all in. Um, all in is actually being a player in free agency, free agency which starts a week from Sunday with legal tampering. Cowboys aren't going to be a player anytime soon in free agency. Hell, they might not even have any of their own guys that they want to bring back signed by the beginning of free agency, which is a week from uh, yesterday, excuse me, from Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, two weeks from Wednesday. They literally are doing what they do. They're dragging their feet. The thing that kills me with the Cowboys is they are always so slow to do anything. Anything. And they're taking their time on Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons, knowing that they need to get the things done. They know they need to get them done, but they're not. And now that we've got literally everybody on one-year deals, Jerry Jones has now created a toxic environment where everybody's on eggshells. And maybe that's his effect that maybe he feels like if we go through and we have everybody scared to death about their job and things that they'll perform. But it's not good because we're hearing people from inside the organization, from secretaries to scouting to coaching, where people are thinking, is this my last year here? Do I need to start thinking about where I'm going to be putting my kids to school? What's going to be my next career path? And we know what happens when you start thinking about your next gig. You can't tell me anything that Dan Quinn prepping for getting the hell out of Dodge hurt didn't hurt the Cowboys. It looked like the defense, which had played well at most of the time, literally looked unprepared. They literally looked unprepared. And then, of course, when he gets out of here, you hear things like him saying that all in, you've got to be all in. Tomorrow's not promised. Well, if you're working for the Dallas Cowboys right now, nothing for anybody is promised. And I just keep looking and understanding that somehow the Dallas Cowboys built the biggest sports franchise in the world. But when you really start peeling off the layers of the onion, I don't know how. I honestly don't know how. Because as I look through and I think about, you know, I, I know that I'm getting 49er fans that are saying that, hey, literally, let, let, me, let me pull up one of these this morning. You know, the only, only time you hear from 49ers is when the Cowboys are exploding. Mark, you talk about how Dak is so good. Trey Lance is going to take his spot. Ha ha. Always trying to take from the 49ers. Mark, just admit, Dak is worse. He would never do that to Purdy. Well, I'm not going to say a guy who threw 36 TDs without a running game and an offensive line that was in flux um, with only nine interceptions is washed. There's a lot of quarterbacks out there that wish they were washed like that. They really wish that they were. Dak is going to be okay with the Cowboys or without the Cowboys. The question will be is, what will the Cowboys be like after the season? Because it almost feels like Jerry Jones is sabotaging the whole organization. Um, Stephen Jones is, let's, let's call a spade a spade. Stephen Jones is the owner without being named owner. He's the one that's running the organization, so to speak. 
um, until he gets into trouble and then his daddy has to bail him out. We've seen every time Stephen Jones has been with a contract and it's been messed up, it's Jerry Jones who's had to intervene to get the shit straight. And that is the truth. The Dallas Cowboys have been screwed over by the contracts that have been written up by Stephen Jones. They always act like we know what we're doing, trust the process and everything else. We're smarter than everybody else. When the fact is, the reason the Cowboys don't have cap room is because of the mismanagement. And because they don't have cap room, they keep having to restructure contracts. I didn't realize, I didn't realize that when the Cowboys ended up bringing back Tyron Smith last year, they restructured his contract. Most people don't know that next year, whether Tyron Smith is on this roster or not, that there's a $6 million dead money hit. $6 million right there. That there's a $7 million hit still for Zeke Elliott. And more than likely, there will be an $8 million hit this year for Michael Gallup along with another $6 million the following year. Because of bad contracts. We were still playing Lyle Collins last year. And when you keep paying, because you can look at it right now, as we talk about, well, Dak Prescott's contract is at $60 million. It's because the Cowboys continue to wait till the last minute to get things done. Jerry Jones is proud about saying deadlines make deals get done. They make them get done in a hurry where they screw the pooch. And now that you think that, you know, if we go ahead and put everybody on one year deal, that they're going to be working so much harder to try and hold on to the job that uh, they're going to get a better outcome. When has that worked with the Cowboys? Did that work with J oh, Jason Garrett? Did it work with Jason Garrett? Did, did we win anything with Jason Garrett? No. You go through with the contracts. You literally trash the players and make them feel like they're stealing money and then expect them to have a team-friendly deal. Um, if you are... Uh, th th honestly... If you are looking at this, if you are an employee of the Cowboys, if you are looking at signing a new contract and you start thinking about your career, because in the end, in the end, what matters in a football career besides being paid and having enough money to last you for the rest of your life? That ring, about getting that ring. You get that ring, they can never take it away from you. You can never take away being a Super Bowl champion. And that's what, when you're at a point of somebody like Dak Prescott, that you've gotten tons of money, that ring is what it's all about. And as I sit here, if I'm sitting here as a quarterback for the Cowboys, although I'm already, I'm going to get paid this year regardless. But when I start looking at the long term and say, I do like this offense that we're run with Mike McCarthy and things. But he might not be here after this year. Do I want to sign a contract? You know, for five years or three years or four years to be here without any kind of certainty of what kind of offense we're going to have or who's going to be the coach? And if I'm C.D. Lamb, you know, may, you know, forget, uh, depending on what his mama said. But if I'm C.D. Lamb and I look and I say, Dak Prescott is the one that's getting me paid. And Dak Prescott's my buddy. Do I want to be here if Dak's not going to be here and Mike McCarthy's not with this offense? Or maybe you look at it and maybe you say, yeah, I'm ready for somebody else. I don't know. But these are questions that you have to have in your mind. If you're having the front office people, if you're having the scouting department and the coaching department all feeling on edge and, you know, not feeling excited about their job, that all filters down to the players with the uncertainty. Jerry Jones has created a toxic work environment that is destined to fail. Just is. And it could literally blow up in his face. Now, 
I've got a crazy idea why this may be the case, but I want to think about this some more before I put this out here because this is kind of kind of damning in some regards, and I want to make sure that I, I got it right before I do. So let's go to get up this morning and um, listen to this message that we have from get up about Dak Prescott and why the Cowboys aren't going to win a Super Bowl. If Dak Prescott becomes the highest paid quarterback in the league this offseason. <sighs> Greeny, my boy, I would be shocked because then that would mean I would have to talk more about Dak than I already do on our network. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I get it. I, I understand. I understand why you can make a case that he should be at a phenomenal season, his best season ever. I just cannot live in a world where Dak Prescott is making more than Burrow and, uh, per year. But then again, Greeny, we're living in a world where Deshaun Watson makes two thirty million guaranteed. So, mm -hmm. what the hell do I know? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> D D Dak will get the money, and you're right. We'll have to start talking about him a little bit. He's someone who barely ever gets mentioned here in the mornings on ESPN. That said, the Cowboys get a lot of attention, and yesterday on you First think? Take, which of course follows us, Chris the Mad Dog Russo. He went in on the Cowboys. He went in on the owner. Listen to this. But I don't want Jerry Jones anywhere near my ball club. He's an owner. Stay as an owner and stay away. I don't want you on the field. I don't want you doing post-game interviews with the media. I don't want you doing radio shows. Uh, there is no accountability with the Cowboys. To me, the karma is always bad with that franchise. Why? Because the owner is too involved. You know it's bad when you have to actually agree with Mad Dog Russo. You know it's bad when you have to agree with Mad Dog Russo because he's 100% right. He is 100% right. Jerry Jones literally has screwed the pooch. And here's where, of course, you know, and, and people, you know, at this point, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. The whole Trey Lance situation where you trade a fourth round pick for a quarterback that you either have to pay him or let him go at the end of this season. You've got till May 2nd whether or not you're going to put on the fifth year option, which is $22.4 million. We keep spending resources on things that aren't about winning with what you have. Just this. And th maybe this is the darkest before the dawn. Maybe this is Jerry Jones who is enjoying um, playing with our emotions. And then at the last second, they get a deal done for Dak and CD and, and then jump in and, and make some moves. Maybe, you know, this is that kind of case but at the moment it just doesn't it's just it's just bad it's just bad but go on with the dog with a big statement d wood is he right no he's not right huh he's Tell me not why. he's not right mm -hmm. listen first of all that's never going to happen yeah. jerry jones yeah. is the is the owner gm he's not he's not going to you know give away the spotlight that's number mm -hmm. one you know what the Cowboys' biggest problem is? Tell me. Their stars don't play like stars in, in, the, in, the, in the most pressure moments during a season. Okay? When did we, the, the, last, the last time we saw the Dallas Cowboys, they were getting a hole stomped in them by the Green Bay Packers mm -hmm. at home. Why? Because their best players didn't show up at the most That's opportune true. time. That's why. This has nothing to do with Jerry Jones and, and whether Jerry Jones is having press conferences outside the locker room. That has no effect on what those guys are doing out there on the field. Okay? It's just, it sounds nice. But let's just be real. I need Dak to play better. I need Micah to play better. I need CD Lamb to play better. I need all those high-priced guys that, you know, that are, you know, have all their shows and all that stuff. I need them to play better in the big moments. That's what will yeah. solve all this stuff. Yeah. Well, the biggest issue is that you're talking about their stars don't play in the biggest moments. They they're not the star. Jerry Jones is the star. There, we there all know that. Go. Their players aren't. In Kansas City, it's Patrick Mahomes. In Baltimore, it's Lamar Jackson. In Cincinnati, it's Joe. In Dallas, it's Jerry Jones. 
Now, both things could be true here. This is still a really good football team. They've won 12 games for three years in a row. I think they have some of the most wins over the last four or five years in the NFL outside of like Buffalo and Kansas City. So still a really good team. They just are committed to mediocrity. They, they can say all they want. The Cowboys don't really want to go be great. They want to be relevant and they want to be mediocre. They don't have a desire to go be great. If they did, they would have made changes after the playoff. That was the worst playoff loss in the history of their organization, and they did nothing. Quite literally did nothing. So far, they've done nothing. I mean, um, the, the, uh, Dan Quinn left, but they did. But that wasn't on their accord. Correct. Yeah, no, you're correct. They've done they did, nothing. They didn't. They did not. They have to this point not Still made any substantive Still a good football team, change. but they got to get more physical. They don't have a talent problem. They have a when it matters the most belief problem. Get in here, Kmart. So it sounds like when I listen to the guys on set, it sounds like they kind of do agree with Mad Dog because Damien, what Mad Dog said was they have an accountability issue. I don't agree with Mad Dog on the karma. Listen, Jerry, he's the PR guy. He's the coach. He's, he's all the things. Mm -hmm. But the issue is self-accountability. I think that from top to bottom, from Jerry to the coaching staff to the players, nobody is actually addressing, hey, I need to be better. So it is an accountability issue. Yes, they want to be relevant, but somebody, everybody has to look at themselves in the mirror and say, I'm not doing the best that I can do. Mike McCarthy is talking about we have a championship culture here. Where? Where is it? I don't, it? Know where I it don't is. see it. It's been years, it's been decades, and that's what they keep talking about, except addressing that the here and now, they're not living up to the star. And that's the problem. And I think that is Mad Dog's ultimate point. I think he went a little, he went Mad Doggy on, on the karma and Jerry needs to just disappear because that's not happening. But it, it's really about the football. And that's the issue that we all agree with. Look, yep. th maybe there are issues that are created by Jerry Jones and his omnipresence and all the there rest of At the end of the and day, Stephen Jones they were at home on a Sunday afternoon and they had the better team on the field. And they gave up 143 rushing yards in a playoff game. And that wasn't Jerry Jones who was out there not hitting anybody, not tackling anybody, getting out-schemed and getting outworked. I don't want to hear it. I, maybe there are some issues involving Jerry Jones, but he's not the reason they got embarrassed in their own building yeah, I also by agree. the Green Bay Packers. And I know Marcus, Marcus is great with this. Marcus always keeps it a buck with the Cowboys. How long are we going to blame the owner and general manager? That's what I just said. That. I mean, we, they win 12 games a year, but That's we right. blame the owner and general manager? That's right. Like at some point, guys got to go play. The, the, it, isn't that what I just said? Like, we at, all the just said the, at the end of the day, your best players got to play their best. I feel like the if everybody moments. does everything they can to finger point at everyone but the players right. in Dallas at some point. Yeah, look, to your point, Jerry Jones is the center of the attention, so he gets the attention. Make a freaking tackle on that man, Caleb Williams, who has... There we go. We're going to leave it right there. Regardless, things are not good in Big D right now. All right, good people. I hope you have a great day. We'll be doing some stuff with the Combine today with my man, Game Time Brian. Hope you guys tune in, and we will see you here soon. Peace out.